Welcome to Church Online. Special welcome if you're with us for the first time. In this service where we come together to worship and pray, reflect and grow, growing closer to God and closer to each other. My name is Lynn and I'm the Minister at Adelaide West and we'll be sharing with you today. We light a candle as we meet and I encourage you to light one if you're able to as well. It reminds us that Christ is the light of the world and shines in the shadows of our lives. We finished our Beyond Our Walls series in March and there's a bookmark that summarises the series and if you would like a copy of it, please email minister at awc.org.au and would love to send it to you. If you live in Adelaide, next Sunday, Churches Together SA has organised a Palm Sunday Peace and Justice Walk starting in Victoria Square at 2pm. It is the churches in South Australia gathering together to walk in unity. After the message today, we'll be sharing communion, so you might like to have some juice and bread or crackers ready for that. Today, in this season of Lent, as we prepare and reflect on the journey to Easter, we sing together, there's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. The reading today is from John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about half a litre of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why isn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. 
You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Extravagant. You know, even in listening to this story, it feels awkward. I wonder what it felt like to witness this. Sometimes watching the devotion of someone to someone else is awkward. Sometimes seeing someone who is completely one-eyed or over-the-top devoted to a particular football team or an organisation or a political persuasion can seem almost awkward to watch. There's no doubt. This is one of those awkward moments. One can only imagine the faces of the disciples as they watched. All four Gospels in the New Testament tell this story of a woman anointing Jesus. But John goes one step further and names her. It is Mary. They are in Bethany. It is two miles from Jerusalem and it makes sense for Jesus to stay with friends as it's only six days before the Passover. And at that time, the number of people in Jerusalem swelled for the Passover. Jesus is with his disciples, as well as the occupants of the house, his friends, Lazarus, Mary and Martha, brother and sisters. The men were reclining around tables and one imagines talking and banter and chatter together, perhaps some bewilderment. They know something is about to happen, but they don't know what or how or when. We see the sense of community of this meal in this painting, showing the hands of the disciples. While Martha serves the food and drink, Mary pours expensive perfume on the feet of Jesus and then wipes his feet with her hair. This is spikenard. It is made from the root of a plant that grows naturally in the Himalayan mountains of India and Nepal. It was a costly oil with a very sweet smell. One of its uses was to use it with spices for a person's body after death to reduce the smell of the body decomposing. At the time, flasks with spiked nard often only contained a tablespoon of this. But we read that this is more like half a litre. Mary's flask is a large one, so I've enlarged the flask to something that's a bit more in keeping with the story because this is extraordinarily extravagant. And we're told it's very expensive. In fact, the amount that Mary used was a year's wages according to Judas. And Mary pours it all over the feet of Jesus. Now, normally, hosts provided water for the feet. And if there was any anointing, that was for the head. And only servants handled the washing of feet. Whereas here, Mary, a family member, washes the feet of Jesus. Once again, we feel the awkwardness of this act. There are aspects of this story that make us uncomfortable. Mary is expressing her love for Jesus. She pushes the boundaries of the customs of the day to do so. Her expression of love was lavishly extravagant. It's too much for Jesus and he reacts. Perhaps his is the hand on the top left of this painting. This perfume is worth a year's wages. That money could have been given to the poor. It seems a reasonable response to us. This is extravagant. Is she being wasteful? It's a question we ask in our lives. It's a question we should ask when we purchase things, when we spend money. As we read this, we're thinking Judas is on the right track. He's asking the right question, but apparently he's asking the question from the wrong motivation. John goes on to tell us that Judas is a thief. He's not caring about the poor, but as the treasurer of the group, he's helping himself to the money. So if the perfume is sold and the money is given for the poor, then he will take some of that first himself. He's clever. He knows that the poor are dear to Jesus and he's picked up that Jesus calls those who follow him to look out for the poor. The response of Jesus is interesting. He doesn't call out Judas on his hypocrisy. Now is not the time. Instead, he says, Leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. 
He's foretelling his death once again. He's aware of the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial and applying spices and perfume. He's aware of a higher picture here. This extravagant love shown to him is also a preparation for what is coming next, his death in the weeks ahead. And then we hear these words. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. They seem strange words to us. I wonder what he meant here. There are echoes here of Deuteronomy 15. Perhaps Jesus is quoting this. We read, there will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. In this, we read that the poor will always be in the land. The context uses this point to encourage generosity towards them, promising Israel that if they cared for the poor, God would supply the nation's needs. Jesus is saying, Prioritise devotion to him. He's not diminishing the importance of serving the poor. The poor will always be with us. And our care for others, the marginalised, the rejected, the lost, the lonely, the poor, is our defining nature as a community. Jesus was not foretelling the forever fate of the poor, but defining the nature of the community called by his name. Those who follow Jesus will always be found standing with the poor. There is a sense here that Jesus was grateful that Mary was present in the moment with him, extravagantly expressing her love and devotion. There seems to be something here about worship, sitting at his feet, going to extraordinary lengths to show devotion, loving Jesus extravagantly. Are we at the feet of Jesus? Are we showing Jesus extravagant love? Are we present in the moment, open to God's leading? What are our motivations in this? What might this story say to us about our own discipleship? We can be inspired by the extravagant love of Mary for Jesus and be reminded of our motivations and what they say to us. Jesus came to minister to others and yet became the one ministered to in surprising ways and by surprising ones. And this reveals to us the possibilities of God's grace and love to each one of us. Remember how the fragrance filled the room, the smell of extravagance? Jesus gives us extravagant love by the giving of his life. And as we, in this time of Lent, turn our thinking to to Easter, preparing ourselves and reflecting on what Easter means to us, the death and resurrection of Jesus and what that means to us, what our response is to the extravagant love of Jesus in this time. And as we do that, remember what Mary did and what Jesus said, how Mary acts outside of traditional ways for the the purpose of embodying love and grace in a way that was timely and relational. And we remember the extravagant grace of God, the extravagant love of Jesus, the outpouring of his love and his life for us. We commit ourselves to loving others extravagantly. This week, how can you give generously to someone? or volunteer generously to help others. We realise again how God's abundant love and generous grace goes far beyond what is practical and reasonable, unmerited and undeserved, beyond our comprehension. To finish, I'm going to read a beautiful affirmation that was written by Bruce Pruer. We believe in the debonair God, who clothes the wildflowers, dressing them so superbly that they outdo Solomon in all his glory, who is the true friend of all creatures, great and small, who feeds magpies and laughing kookaburras and even doleful ravens and drongos. We believe in the God of Christ Jesus, the source of abundance, full of grace and truth, 
We believe in the extravagant God who turns the other cheek, goes the second mile, turns water into the best wine, brings healing with his every touch and who welcomes a woman's love as she fills the house with unforgettable fragrance. We believe in the faithful God of Jesus Christ who sweated blood in an olive grove and kept the faith to the very end. We believe in the redeeming God who spared no cost, forgave even his brutal crucifiers, had time for a dying thief at his side, and who on the third day did a thing so prodigious that even his friends were dismayed with joy. We believe in the God of Jesus Christ, the source of abundance wherever we turn and no matter what we do. Amen. The extravagant love of God leads us to extravagant worship of God and extravagant giving to others.
Communion is a visible sign of God's love and grace. And together with our in-person services, we are drawn here by God's extravagant love. Virtually connected, we're a gathered community, connecting by time and participating together for us now and with Christians right across the world. We remember how it all began. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples. And while they were eating, he took a piece of bread, said a blessing, broke it and shared it amongst them. Similarly, he blessed and passed around a cup of wine from which they all drank. Today, we remember a body broken and a life poured out. We remember God's extravagant love. We follow the example of Jesus and give thanks before sharing. Let's pray. In this time and place, O oh God, you prepare a table for each of us, offering not just bread or wine, but your very presence, your amazing and extra extravagant love and grace. Peace, hope and joy that we may be filled, forgiven, encouraged and sent out again. Risen Christ, present with us now, thank you for all that you have done, for giving of yourself so extravagantly, abundantly, for us. We're sorry for those times when we do miss the mark. Forgive us when we get so caught up in ourselves. Forgive us when we do things that separate us from you or others. Forgive us for the things that we say, think and do that are not of you. Forgive us for those times that our motivations are not what they should be. Thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven. May we rest in your love, knowing that we can have a fresh start. And even today is a new beginning in you. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and juice in front of all of us. May they remind us of the body and blood of Christ, so that united to him, we may become all that you call us to be. Through Christ with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together. You can do that in your preferred version or your preferred language. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread and to tear it apart. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, a reminder that we are broken people and put back together by God. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ, reminding us of the life of Christ. So here in this moment, graced by the spirit of hope and peace, we discover the extravagant love that Jesus has for us. And we rejoice that these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. I invite you to take and eat the bread, share it around with others in the room if you're with others, and to remember Jesus' body broken and his compassion and love for us. And we take the cup and we remember the life that Jesus lived and the life that we are called to live.
May this food strengthen us to love one another and be a reminder of God's extravagant love for each of us, equipping us to follow Jesus. As part of our love for God and God's love and compassion for others and so ours, we pray for others. Let's pray together. Father, creator God, we pray for our world. Your mercy will deliver the people of Ukraine and many other places around the world from the destructive evil of war. We pray that peace would be possible. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the many people affected by the COVID pandemic, those sick and their families, health workers and police, health ministers and governments. Pray that they will be able to work together for the good of all. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray that all who are suffering through the continuing floods in New South Wales and Queensland will receive all the assistance that they need so that they can face the future with courage and hope. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, we pray for people on our hearts today and we lift the faces of those that we know and love who are hurting, lonely, lost, feeling unloved or alone, facing health issues. And we pray that your love and your peace and your grace would be close to them right now. Holy Spirit, help us to know and to experience the extravagant love of God in our everyday lives. Help us to worship extravagantly and to give to others with extravagant love. We pray our prayers together in the name of Jesus who holds us close and brings us near in the power of God's love. Amen.
your love surround me Bring me near Draw me to your side And as I wait I'll rise up like the eagle And I will soar with you Your spirit leads me Thank you for joining us today. We hope this service has brought you hope. If you would like prayer, please send us an email. We'd love to pray with you, or if you're watching live, press the prayer button. We pray that our gifts, both financial and practical, as well as our gift of time, may proclaim God's extravagant love for all. This week, remember the extravagant love of God which leads to ex us to extravagant worship of God and extravagant giving to others. And may the grace and the kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ and the extravagant love of God and the friendship, fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always as you serve God's world. Amen. Blessings on your week. So